We want to first uh, bring you a quick reminder of the big breaking story this morning. There's been an attack on the Indian consulate in Herat in Afghanistan. That's the rapidly developing story. The Indian consulate in the Afghan city of Herat has been attacked by gunmen. Area has been surrounded by security forces from Afghanistan as well as the Indo-Tibetan border police. A BBC report in the area says the assault has been going on for several hours. Well, it is not clear who is behind the attack and there are as of now no details of the casualties. But Saeed Akbaruddin has tweeted from the Ministry of External Affairs saying that the Indian consulate is in fact in charge uh, of the situation there. There have so far been no casualties that have been reported. The operation is underway and all personnel from the council are, uh, are reportedly safe and Sujata Singh, the Foreign Secretary, is in fact monitoring the situation. That's an official tweet from the Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, sketchy details still, but our Editor Strategic Affairs, Gaurav Savan, joins us on the phone line uh, for more. Gaurav, sketchy details emerging uh, from that attack reported early this morning, but what, what we're learning is that this encounter has in fact been carrying on uh, for several hours. What are you picking up from your sources? Uh, Rishika, the encounter is still on. Uh, the firing is coming from three sides. Uh, the terrorists are armed uh, with automatic rifles, also with rocket propelled grenades. Right. At least two terrorists have attacked uh, this building uh, from, from an adjacent building using RPGs. But so far, the attack has failed. Uh, both the Indo-Tibetan border police uh, that is in charge of the close proximity protection of the uh, consulate and the Afghan army have repulsed this attack and reinforcements are being sent in. All Indian personnel are safe so far. Alright, uh, and Gaurav, uh, any other details? There are no details of any casualties. The External Affairs Ministry uh, has uh, said that everybody is safe. Are you picking up anything to the contrary? What about the security forces? Uh, in the Indian security uh, system, in the ITBP, all are safe. We still don't have information about the Afghan army, which was mm. outside the consulate and retaliating because this was a surprise pre-dawn attack using rocket propelled grenades and that uh, is extremely uh, dangerous for the first uh, layer of the cordon, Shiv, as you well know. Yes. Uh, but uh, the, the timing of this attack, Shiv, is very curious. Given the time that Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has been invited as, as a member of the SARC uh, to attend Narendra Modi swearing in, the Afghan army and ISI not very comfortable with this. And in the past, whether it was in 2008 or subsequently, uh, ISI has repeatedly targeted Indian interests, the Indian embassy, consulates. Uh, and other Indian development projects in Afghanistan. Well, a breaking angle that we're bringing you this morning, Gaurav, just stay with me for a moment. Attack is being looked at as the ISI's way of testing India's resolve. Uh, intelligence sources are telling our editor's strategic affairs, Gaurav Savant, that the agencies had feared an attack on Indian interests in Afghanistan at this very volatile time, right before government formation, uh, when the guard actually may be uh, down. Gaurav, uh, ISI continuing to test Indian assets in Afghanistan. It doesn't appear that that resolve is going to go down at this time and they may be just testing what defences are like at this time. Absolutely, Shiv. Uh, there's a new Prime Minister, somebody who's seen as extremely strong. Uh, this is ISI's way or Pakistan's way, according to our sources in the intelligence agencies, uh, to check Prime Minister-designate Narendra Modi's resolve. Uh, also see mm. uh, whether his response will be any different uh, from former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, who was often targeted as weak and timid uh, when it came to Pakistan. Uh, will Narendra Modi, how will he greet Nawaz Sharif now uh, when Nawaz Sharif comes and will it, will it lead to the relationship starting uh, on, on a very, very sour note? Uh, that, is, that is what is what our sources are telling us and they had warned uh, almost a week in advance the moment election results came and, and it was clear that Narendra Modi would become the Prime Minister uh, intelligence agencies had warned that as soon as he takes over or around the time he takes over right. there would be an attack either on Indian interests in Afghanistan or within India Right, absolutely. Also, the information that's coming in at this point in time is that three terrorists armed with rocket-propelled grenades and automatic rifles uh, have in fact attacked uh, the Indian consulate. The attack started at dawn. That's the reports that are coming in. The Indian consulate in Herat attacked from two sides, that, as Gaurav was telling us right now, including the RPGs fired from a building. So, fierce gunfight is on. It has been going on for the past three hours. ITBP plus Afghanistan Army uh, is in fact in the process of that counter-attack. Reinforcements have also been called in 
at this stage and obviously the council at Shiv at this point in time heavily fortified and really the timing of this attack very very suspect. Absolutely no coincidences here all consulate personnel are safe we can confirm uh, through uh, official channels in the external affairs ministry the Indian foreign office and the foreign secretary uh, Sujata Singh personally is in touch with the consulate and sources are saying intelligence agencies are actually warned of a terror attack of this kind on Indian interests in Afghanistan. Remember, the ISI has continuously uh, uh, provoked India in Afghanistan and this is only the very latest in what has been a string of intentional prov provocations and assaults on Indian interests uh, in uh, that volatile country. We still have Gaurav Savant, our editor of Strategic Affairs, uh, with us. Gaurav, the Foreign Secretary personally monitoring the situation. She is, uh, she, she's very keen. In fact, if you recall uh, last time uh, when the Indian embassy was attacked and that was a major attack uh, on the Indian embassy, right. uh, the second time she had flown into Afghanistan and uh, personally uh, looked at the welfare of every every person in, in, uh, in, in the embassy. Uh, look, there is a special desk, there is a S desk of the ISI uh, in Islamabad right. that specifically looks at the Haqqani brothers uh, and other terror organizations within uh, Afghanistan and those who can target Indian interests. Uh, if you recall, uh, we've lost brave Indian Army officers, uh, especially doctors, uh, when terrorists in a 26-11 style attack right. uh, went into their hotel and uh, went room to room searching for Indians and killing them. Uh, and at that point of time, uh, India had made very clear, of course that was in the previous regime, that such attacks will not be tolerated. Right, absolutely, Gaurav. And also at this point in time, this is being looked at as a response to the swearing in diplomacy that we've been talking about. Uh, speculation is still rife over whether the Pakistani Prime Minister actually attends or not. But Hamid Karzai, uh, day before yesterday, in fact, you broke the story to us that Hamid Karzai has already confirmed. So this could perhaps just be a response to that as well. This could well be. This could well be. Now, uh, you know, top sources in the Pakistani civil establishment have confirmed to me that Nawaz Sharif is very keen to attend yeah. and he is willing to defy the army and come to India. Right. That would put him on a sticky wicket. But is Nawaz Sharif playing both sides? That's the big question because he comes here uh, and, and uh, pretends that uh, you know all is well between India and Pakistan exactly. and he wants a new chapter. But at the same time, he authorizes the ISI or he's in, in uh, like in Kargil, uh, he's playing both sides that they attack us uh, in, in Kargil and now they attack us in Herat. Of course, the scale is completely different, but right. Nawaz Sharif could well be playing both sides. Absolutely. He could well be playing both sides, which is why it's so controversial about whether he comes or not. But what about Hamid Khan? Karzai, these uh, attacks are never coincidental. We're going to get a view from Islamabad uh, in just a moment from now. Our correspondent Hamza Amir uh, is just being put through in a moment. We'll get a view from him as well. But this is the big breaking story we're getting to you. The Indian consulate in Herat has been attacked by three heavily armed terrorists. Thankfully, no casualties on the Indian side. We'll get you a confirmation on the rest in just a moment. Hamza Amir is live with us from Islamabad. Uh, Hamza. Uh, take us through the latest that you're hearing about this attack from the Pakistan side. Uh, there's speculation about the involvement of the ISI in this particular attack as well. What are you hearing from your sources? Uh, well, sources uh, in Afghanistan have confirmed that, uh, that there are militants who are actually hiding inside a house close by to the uh, Indian consulate in Herat in Afghanistan. And uh, they have conducted an attack for the past three years, resisted. Uh, any uh, retaliatory action by the forces against him mm -hmm. and unfortunately enough till now uh, it's only the one national army and the one national police that are trying to actually cope up with them while they are actually uh, responding with very heavy artillery firing on the Indian consulate. Right. Fortunately enough uh, uh, it, they, there's no employee of the Indian uh, consulate that actually has been reported being injured or even being killed uh, because they're inside but Still, uh, strong resistance is being given and if there is actually, I'm not sure about the number of militants, but if there are three in number, then it is a very strong resistance provided by them uh, to a good number of soldiers who are standing outside that uh, premises where they're uh, actually attacking them from. Right, also uh, very sketchy details emerging at this point in time, uh, but have you learned of any casualties whatsoever? We understand that the Ministry of External Affairs here claims that all, uh, you know, all Indian personnel there are safe, but have there been any casualties uh, from the attackers? Uh, no, no such casualties have been reported. In fact, uh, uh, the one national army officials who are actually outside the quadrant of the area 
have not even been able to go close to that particular house because they are probably scared of having the of uh, militants using heavy artillery. Yes. But uh, the big question is that it's been three three uh, long hours uh, for three militants to actually resist such an attack. Right. And uh, uh, that is the, that is the big question that will have to be answered on the capability of one national army uh, to actually take care take control of the situation in Afghanistan after the U.S. withdrawal uh, due in 2014. Ah, Hamza, this is, comes at a hugely sensitive time, doesn't it? You know, Hamid Karzai has confirmed that he's going to be coming for Narendra Modi swearing in. Uh, you know, in a short while from now, we will have some clarity on whether Nawaz Sharif is going to come. So, you know, there are no coincidences in this game that happens. You know, this sort of thing has happened before where terrorists have tried to queer the pitch, you know, raise temperatures right before any kind of uh, diplomatic outreach between both sides. You're right. Uh, it, it, this incident has, has come at a time when there are two very important things happening inside Afghanistan. Uh, one, obviously, they are not very happy with the Afghan uh, president's actually, uh, you know, consent towards going to India. One. Secondly, they are not happy with the uh, uh, election of Narendra Modi because they have not right. forgotten uh, the 2002 massacre. Number three, there is a whole movement that has been started by the locals of uh, the Afghanistan led by the former Taliban militants called Rahe Nijat Afghanistan, which is opposing uh, uh, any foreign element to be present in Afghanistan and also promoting the Islamic ideology across Pakistan, across Afghanistan again. So I think these are three very major reasons why this retaliation is being is actually being conducted and coming yeah. out uh, and voicing its anger. And not only that, it's a serious concern uh, when, uh, when uh, U.S. forces and NATO forces do their withdrawal at, at later this year, then a one national army and a one national police does not seem equipped and actually uh, you know uh, trained enough to actually cope up with situations like these because they have resisted them for three years and if it's three four five militants hiding in, in a small house then it is a very big question on their credibility of how they will secure the lives of, of uh, uh, you know embassies in conflict inside the one after us withdrawal.